I'm going to start by showing you our academic web page and kind of guiding you around because we'd love to believe that it's easy to find our resources. So I'm going to sort of show you how to find things yourself. And then I'm going to show you a couple extra resources. And in the process, I'll talk through how you would use some of these things in a course. So the first thing I want to show you is our academic web page. I put some important URLs here on the side. It's really just jump.com slash academic and community.jump.com. But within jump.com slash academic, there's some short links to get to some of the things that we're going to go to. So this may be a moment to screen capture if you're watching this to keep track of those short links. If you are trying to give links to something for your students, it can be helpful sometimes to have those short links to get directly to the thing you're trying to point them to. But we're really just going to spend our time navigating around in jump.com slash academic. And then um, I'll show you a few things in our community, our user community at community.jump.com. And then, as I already mentioned, our team exists to help you. So if you're trying to incorporate Jump into a course at your university and you get stuck and you need some help or you just want to know, is there a resource for this topic, you are welcome to email us. So you can email our team at academic at jump.com if you've got sort of a generic question or if there's something that I'm talking about today and you want to get in touch with me about that, send an email directly to me at ruth.hummel at jump.com. So let's get started on the main academic page. So if you go to jump.com slash academic, it will navigate you to your particular country location. So I'm on an English language page in the US, so it changes the URL just slightly. And then I land here on our main academic page. And we recently changed our academic structure, and so we're hoping this makes it a little bit easier for you to navigate and find what you're looking for. So when you land on this page, the first choice you have to make is, am I a faculty member? Am I someone else sort of faculty, but uh, doing research specifically, not necessarily teaching courses? Or am I a student? And at the bottom of all of our pages, uh, we have this have a question contact us that takes you to a contact form that gets that your question directly to our team. Again, you can also email us at academic at jump.com. So we're going to go to the faculty page to look for teaching kinds of materials. And so when you land on the faculty page, then you again get some choices, a little bit of information about how Jump can help you in your course. So if you are trying to get a broader usage of Jump at your school and you want to show your colleagues information about Jump, this is a nice page to go to to, to help people understand why it's such amazing software for teaching and research. On the other end, learn about licensing options. So if you don't have a Jump license in place at your school, this is the page to go to to learn about all your options there. There are very inexpensive ways to get Jump for universities, and we, again, want to help you with that. So send us an email if there's anything, if you've got questions, or we can help you with that too. But I'm assuming, if you've joined me for this, that you're at the stage where you'd like to see what we can offer to help you build your course. And, and plug and play different materials that we've already created into your course. So for this, we're gonna to go to the teaching resources option. And on this page, if you need to go backwards, you can return to the academic homepage up here. But on this page, the first thing we wanna direct you to is course collections, where we've put together some materials that we think will help you teach many different courses. And we're working on this right now, so in the next few months, you're gonna see new pages appear here. But these are some of the common courses that we see people teaching Jump in, and that we see the benefit of using Jump to teach these courses. So if you're, we're going to focus on this intro statistics page today, but if you're interested in any of these other topics, hop onto those pages and see what kinds of things we've curated for you in those spots. Each of these pages is going to reference stuff from these other tabs. So these other tabs are pointing to these quick guides. Within Jump, we've got a lot of ways we refer to these guides. So quick guides, um, we sometimes call these the one page guides because they're just a single page explaining how to do something in Jump. So if, for example, you need to teach your students how to find the correlation between two variables, you can go to one page guides and look for correlation. And then you'll have one single page with directions and an example that the students can follow along with. They actually get that example data set. Or they can watch a two minute video instead. So real fast, right to the, the point of how do you do this in Jump. So sometimes we call those the one page guides or the quick guides and the, the page when you land on it is called the learning library. So all of those terms we're kind of using interchangeably. Um, hopefully that's not going to be too confusing for you. The case studies are longer. So the one page guides, one page. 
Case studies are examples you could use for a project in, in a class. So you could assign a case study to your students and they could do a whole project for over a week or two weeks using that data set. The case studies are typically maybe 10 to 15 pages of sort of the story, the real world situation that the data arose in. What are the questions? What are we trying to do to answer it? And then there's a data set that goes along with each of these as well. So from the case study library, you can download these um, by various different topics. And if you are an instructor, you can also request the solutions to these case studies from us. So over here on this request solutions, there's a, a form for you to fill out to request the solutions for any of the case studies that you want to use in your course. We're really careful about those spreading out those solutions. So we need to know that you're an instructor teaching, teaching a course before we um, pass those on to you. So hopefully your students don't have copies of the solutions and um, you can use these in a course. Online courses using Jump is stuff that's sort of already created that you could assign um, to your students. So you could assign a short e-learning course or a segment of an e-learning course, one module to your students, have them complete that on their own time and then provide you with a certificate that gets produced when they've completed that section. So you could use these for supplementary learning or if you need to make sure your students have met certain prerequisite knowledge, you could assign this as their first homework assignment, just one module. Or you could offer this information to students for their own, to enrich their, their learning, um, to take on their own time. So the first thing listed here is something called the Statistical Thinking for Industrial Problem Solving eCourse. This is a really cool course. It was designed, it's totally free. Anyone can enroll in it. And even if your students or you don't have Jump at your university just freely available, when you enroll in this free course, you get three months access to a web version of Jump Pro to, to use for this course. So anyone can take this course. It doesn't matter if you've got Jump or not. And it's totally free. And so if you enroll in this course, um, you'll cover these seven modules. Some of the modules are on topics like regression and ANOVA, or just sort of how to pose your problem in a statistical way. Um, there's even a sec section on um, data mining and predictive modeling. There's one on designing experiments. So it's a bunch of topics that are really motivated by what our commercial jump customers tell us they need from their workforce. So if you're trying to help your students get prepared to enter jobs in the workforce, whether it's in uh, a chemical manufacturing company or um, consumer market research or uh, 23andMe and they're, they're analyzing genetic data. So all the many types of things you can do in the workplace with data, this course is gonna give a lot of the stepping stones that are needed for, for really thinking statistically about problems in those sort of courses. So again, th this is a totally standalone course but you could ask your students to do one or a few of these seven modules and, and turn in those certificates if you'd wanted to use this with your course, or you could just provide this information to the students if they wanted to do their own um, extra learning. Then there's also a bunch of e-courses from SAS Education. So if you're a Jump user, you may already know, but Jump and SAS are the same company. So Jump is a product that is offered from the company SAS. And so SAS, the big company, has a whole education department that includes a department on jump education. So we say these are e-courses from SAS education because it's a special department, but they provide a lot of jump courses. So they also provide SAS courses. So if you'd like to learn more about SAS courses, you can also go to uh, check out these offerings. These courses are similar to the statistical thinking for industrial problem solving. These are more standalone courses that you and your students can enroll in. If you've got a campus license, um, so a, a JUMP academic suite at your university where JUMP is provided through your IT or your software services, um, then you should already have the right prerequisites to be able to use these courses for free. So this first course, free to everyone, this next set of courses free if you've got the right kind of academic suite license. So a, a department or a campus cover it, coverage of an academic suite license. So if, if you're teaching with Jump, there's a good chance these are free to you. Again, you can contact us to get more information on making sure you can get your students access to these courses if they want to enroll. Lots of different topics covered in these Jump courses. And these courses 
uh, as well as some additional courses that are not online. So this is the e-courses from SAS Education, but SAS Education also does some extra in-person courses for um, commercial customers. And all of those course materials for these e-courses and for those other commercial courses, you can also get those teaching materials. So if you are developing a brand new statistics course in your university and you want some PowerPoint slides to start teaching from and then adapt as you go along, you can actually get access to those materials as well. So that's again on the request solutions and instructor access only. These e-courses, you can actually get the instructor materials for these by requesting them from, from SAS Education. The last thing listed here is a set of lecture videos online. There is a wonderful colleague at JUMP, Julian Paris, who taught at uh, UC San Diego for a while, um, taught statistics, and he had a flipped course where he recorded his lectures and he put them on a YouTube site. And then he had his students watch the lectures on their own. And when they came to class, they worked on problems that he could help them while they worked on their, their problems in class. He put all his lecture videos open online. And so that's, if you click on this, you'll find an index list of lecture videos covering basically an entire intro statistics course of topics right here. So if you're suddenly finding yourself teaching online because of COVID-19 or for whatever reason, if you need quickly to have some lecture videos, high quality lecture videos ready to show your students and you don't have the time or the ability to easily create those right away, you could start by, by using his videos in your course um, as you start uh, adapting again all that material for your own. So lots of things here. And then as I mentioned, you can request the solutions to the case studies or those instructor access only materials um, from these. So uh, uh, click on this form to request the case study solutions. There's a different request form to request those SAS education materials. This is the list of the full offerings, not just the e-courses from SAS education. So all this online courses, wonderful supplementary things, you might wanna use them, but I think most professors, most lecturers, most instructors as you're building your course are going to be a little more interested in some of these short materials, plugging them into a curriculum that you've already kind of established. So we're going to focus a little bit more on those for the rest of this um, session. Okay, so I'm going to take a, a, a brief pause <laughs> to let all that sink in. All we've really done so far is go to jump.com slash academic, go to the faculty option and then choose the teaching materials. That's how we landed here. If you want to go directly to this page, this is jump.com slash courses is the short link to get here. So if you want to just save that as a bookmark, you can come directly here to this course material library, which again links to lots of other materials as well. So the next thing we're going to do is look in this introductory statistics course collection at the many things collected and how you could use them in your actual course. As we look through this, you're, we're going to hit up these different sections. So the slash learn, jump.com slash learn, that takes you right to the quick guides. Slash cases takes you right to those case studies. We also have this webinar series. You guys are watching a webinar right now. All the rest of the webinars that we offer in our academic webinar series are posted at jump.com slash webinars. You can also go there to sign up for future live webinars. And I'm also going to mention a few textbooks um, and some resources related to textbooks. If you want to look at the um, textbook offerings related to jump for sort of an intro stats or advanced stats curriculum, this jump.com slash get books will take you straight there. So you can navigate all of that through these links or you can go straight to those sections with these short links. And then when we're finished looking at this course collection and all these things, then I'm going to show you another world that opens to you when you go to our user community and all the cool things that professors post there and all the things you could be interacting with at that user community. So this is probably going to take us another 15 minutes to cover this. So, so we'll probably, I'll, I'll probably talk about materials for about 30 minutes total. And then we're going to have quite a bit of time left for you to ask questions. So stick around if you've got a specific question that you want to ask in the chat, and we'll have a lot of time for me to specifically answer your questions if you're looking for a specific resource. Um, for anyone watching this webinar recorded after the fact, uh, you're not going to be able to ask your questions on YouTube <laughs> re-watching this video, but you'll be able to send an email to academic at jump.com or to ruth.hummel at jump.com and get your questions answered about materials. Okay, so 
lots of <laughs> website navigation and here we are we've landed here you can bookmark this page jump.com slash courses and when you're sitting down ready to make your um, annotated syllabus with all your links to everything the students need here's where you start so let's go to introductory statistics there will be a few more uh, webinars coming up in the series on a, a couple other specific course courses um, so some of these materials will overlap there will be a little bit of more unique material for some of those other topics so when you land on this page uh, at the top corner there's a little video this is a one of our webinars from this academic webinar series about teaching introductory statistics with jump that walks through more details of some of these resources Here's the list of some of the tutorial type things that you can look at. So some basics, these are some of the one page guides, but just the really basic ones. More of the one page guides, webinars, more classroom materials, those case studies I mentioned. There's lab activities developed for some intro stats topics. They're actually a lab activities that were developed for AP statistics, but they're really great for intro stats as well because AP statistics is an intro stats class. So there's some nice lab activities already developed those SAS education uh, materials for, for uh, you, your use in the classroom and the other e-learning courses to assign to students. And then within JUMP, there are a whole bunch of built-in applets to demonstrate statistical concepts. You can actually see one of them in the background of this video. This is uh, about the sampling distribution for uh, one mean. So you can see the distribution of the population in the background, then you can see the distribution of a sample much skinnier, the standard deviation got skinnier. And then here's the distribution of the sample means. So each time we take a sample, it drops another mean into this distribution. So all these types of applets, so many wonderful applets available as well. So that's one of the things I'll show you today. Also, so many built-in data sets. If you're looking for an example, there's about 500 data sets built into Jump Software. So we'll look at a few recommended data sets for a couple of these intro stat topics. The Jump Help, our documentation, also has a ton of examples. So you can actually search our Jump Help as well and find directions and examples, um, again, using sample data sets. So you can find instructions already in the, in the Jump Help to help your students or help you. And then books and book resources. Uh, we've got this listed last, but really if you're developing a course, this is where you want to start. So what textbook are you going to use? Are you going to use a textbook at all? So if you are using a textbook, let, we're going to start there in a second. Um, any of these, you could click on them and scroll down and you'll find our recommendations for intro stats for the particular things that will be of use to you. But I'm going to show you this special sample intro stats syllabus with Jump Resources. So we're going to download this Word document. I have it already open to really show you how you could use these resources in a syllabus in your course. So this is a Word document, so you can grab it, you can edit it, you can change anything, keep whatever you want, and you can post this um, if you've got Canvas or some other um, course software that, that you wanna uh, provide this to your students. It's really easy to do. So when you're beginning your plan for your intro stats course, first choice really about books. So I put the books right at the top. So here's a few recommendations, uh, not exactly recommendations. There are many, many wonderful options for books to use for intro statistics. Here are a few options that use Jump in the book. And these options specifically also have some um, add-ins that make the data easier for the students to use. So I'm gonna show you that. I have Jump open. I'm running it on a Mac. So I see that Jump menu bar along the top. And I have this add-ins option in my menu bar. So after DOE, Analyze, Graph, Tools, Add-ins. If you've never downloaded an add-in before, you won't see this until the first time you download and install an add-in. But this is where we can surface the data sets for some of these books. So if we go to that short link for the books, if we go to jump.com slash get books. That takes us to where there's a list of textbooks. So here's a bunch of books that you could use. And when they have an add-in, that add-in is linked below so that you can download it. We also have a specific tab just for the textbooks with add-ins. So here's where that list of intro stat suggestions comes from. So let's just take the first one. Let's say we wanted to use this Jump for Teaching Elementary Statistics book. If I click on it, it downloaded this add-in. When I open the add-in, 
it gives me this pop-up. It says a jump add-in downloaded from another computer is being installed. Jump add-ins can run scripts on this machine. And then it asks me, should I install this? Question mark. And I say, yes, install it. So when I click install, now when I look in my add-ins, I have a new add-in, this Teaching Elementary Statistics by Olson. So if I click on that, I see a little picture of what the book looks like. I see a little readme that says, oh, this contains all the data sets. Cool, click on a gray triangle to open an outline. Um, so there's description here. If I click on the gray triangle, here's all the data sets listed, numbered by, um, by the data set in the book. There's some extra scripts and tools down here. So here's some, some cool things if you needed to demonstrate regression, for example, some more notes, calculators, and more online resources linked here. So this is something that all of your students could download if you are using this textbook. So if they go to do a homework problem, the data set's already built into the software. So here I clicked on salmon number 18. It's a really simple data set. It just has the direction toward and away and the count, 120 and 80. Uh, let's click on another one. What about fear factor original? <laughs> oh boy, I don't know this data set. So it looks like, I'm not sure what these counts are, but it looks like they're um, terrifying things, things you're afraid of. Um, and then some kind of response. So I'm sure that's described in the book. So that's one example of a, a list of data sets from an add-in from one of these textbooks. Let's look at another one. Um, maybe this Statistics Learning from Data by Roxy Peck. So if I click on this one, it downloads. Again, I click on it, I say install. And now when I go back to add-ins, now I have the second one here. And this one has the data sets listed by chapter. So when you're in chapter two, here's the example data sets, and then here's the exercises data sets. So it's really easy for the students to just have this installed and then grab their data. It's also easy for you as the professor when you wanna show something. So we recommend these books for that reason, but there's also other books that use Jump, uh, wonderful books that don't yet have an add-in specifically made for Jump. If you ever wanted to make that add-in, feel free. <laughs> Post it in the community and share it with other people. Okay, so that's the decision about books. It's a totally personal decision. Find the book that works for you, but if you choose one of these, you also get that Jump add-in. I also put at the top of this syllabus the, those course materials, those um, so here's the e-learning courses that are available from SAS Education, and here's the other courses that are developed for in-person teaching that you could get the PowerPoint slides and the exercises and those things if you're at a, um, if you have a Jump Academic Suite license at your university. So again, get in touch with us if you need help accessing those things. So after you've chosen your book, the next thing to do is to actually make the syllabus. So I've written out some basic, a typical intro stats type of syllabus with descriptive stats first, uh, followed by probability concepts, discrete probability distributions, continuous, then sampling distributions, estimation and inference for proportions, uh, estimation and inference for one mean, two paired means, two independent means, chi-squared, ANOVA, and simple regression, and a little bit of non-parametrics. So these are some typical topics covered in an intro stats class. Again, you can Take this document, download this document, and use it, adapt it any way you want to. For each of these topics, what I've created here is some, some of those quick guides or short videos that are gonna just be really helpful for the student to find information right away. So the first thing is this links, if I click on it, did it take us there? There we go, very slowly. Oh, I clicked on it three times. So that takes us to this page that's got just the real basics. So how to import data, watch a three and a half minute video on importing data or read this little one page guide about it. Visualize and summarize data, watch a four minute video or grab this guide or just do both and keep the guide for re referring to later. Exploring distributions. So real simple things on this um, learn the basics of jump page back to my Word document. So that's the first thing I recommend is to, for the student to watch importing data, visualizing and summarizing data, and explore distributions. Now they already know how to use Jump, so that's great. Then they can visit the learning library. This is our one-page guides for more of these, including in the graphical displays and summaries section. They can find bar charts, histograms, box plots, scatter plots, tabulating data, graph builder. 
So that, our short link to that is jump.com slash learn. So here at jump.com slash learn, if they go to graphical displays and summaries, they'll see bar charts with a video and a one page guide, um, histograms, video, one page guide, dot plots, box plots, scatter plots, and so on. So you'll find a whole bunch of topics, of almost 100 topics covered in, in these this library here. So these are the ones we would recommend at this stage of an intro stats class. You might not use all of these, you might just recommend a couple of them. And then the next thing that as you're teaching you might need for this section is some demos or applets to demonstrate statistical concepts. So there aren't a lot for exploratory data analysis, but one that I could recommend is if you wanted to create a dot plot, um, you can do that in Graph Builder. So if you use this, um, the, the learning library about dot plots up here, it'll teach you one way. But another option is this um, dot plot from the teaching demonstrations. So these applets are really cool and they're available in Jump in the help menu from this thing called sample data and then teaching resources. So when I'm in jump from the help menu, there are two things that call say sample data. The library is just an alphabetical list of all the data sets, but this one is the one that's got all the extra stuff. So the one that doesn't say the word library. So I click on it and I see, first of all, here's a bunch of recommended data sets for different topics. So this is super helpful if you're looking for examples. And then down here is this teaching resources section. So here, again, a few um, data examples that are really nice for teaching. They're pretty simple, smaller. You can really get a grasp on them pretty quickly. The teaching scripts, calculators, and simula simulations. These are the things that I'm pointing out here. So in this case, we wanted to look at the teaching scripts, teaching demonstrations dot plot. So under the teaching scripts, teaching demonstrations, there's one called dot plot. So you can see as I expand these, there's a lot of these demos built in. So this dot plot, if I click on it, oh, I don't have a, a data set open. So we need a, an open data set. So let's find one, maybe um, big class. This is a really, really standard data set um, in, in a lot of jump things. It's students' names, their ages, whether they're male or female, and then their height and their weight. So if I use this and I use that dot plot, I can now, it choose, shows me all the continuous things. So I can make a dot plot of the height, or I can make a dot plot of the ages, or of the weights. So there's, these applets are all built in. And so there's a recommendation in this document for which applets are going to help you on these particular topics. Then there's a recommendation of some data sets. So I already showed you that help sample data has the alphabetical list, help sample data library has this index list. So if you wanted to see all the data sets, we could have gone to help and the other one. And here's a bunch of data sets. So lots and lots of data sets, but because it's kind of overwhelming to learn what they're all about, you can also use this index list. You can look by the topic area or you can look by the statistical uh, analysis type. So I am put a few recommendations here, so some nice things to visualize for students. That big class is a nice one. Big class families, let's go back and I'll show you this one. I love this data set because it's got little pictures in it. So big class families is has these little cartoon pictures and it's applied the label so that those pictures will show up as labels. So if we went to, um, if we made a graph builder and we put uh, height by weight for the different ages here. This is a, a different fit for each of the ages. If I hover over a point, it actually shows me as the label, the, the kid's name and the kid's picture. So this is just a nice data set for really being able to explore and, and drill down with these little pictures. So lots of recommendations of data sets here, but there are so many more data sets that would be relevant as well. There's also all the data sets from those jump add-ins for the textbooks. So you could always download those add-ins even if you're not using the textbook and use those add-ins for their data sets. <laughs> um, and so there's another link back to that book page here. Then the case studies. So what about descriptive and exploratory data analysis case studies? So back on our web page, tidy up a little bit. So back on our main page for intro statistics, we had that link to the case studies here uh, that are suggested. 
So this is what is recommended for intro stats in general, but we can also click on this and go straight to the case study library. So here we can sort them by sort of the general type of topic area or by analysis type. So here's a bunch of exploratory and descriptive cases and some more information about the cases. And each one, if we click on um, medical malpractice, for example, it describes what is this the purpose of this case study, what you're going to learn, what you're going to learn in jump. Here's where you download the PDF describing the case study, and here's where you download the data set. Again, there are solutions to these, but you have to contact us. Um, so that was back on. The main courses page, this request solutions. That's where you can ask for solutions to those case studies. So we've got a bunch of case studies, including um, a, a few that are nice for descriptive and exploratory analysis. So those are listed here. Then lab activities. So let's look at a lab activity. So these I mentioned were developed for AP statistics, but they're really relevant to any intro statistics course. And so here for exploring and describing data, there's three different lab activities and you could use those as assignments. Let's pop back to that Word document. The second topic area, probability concepts. Again, some recommendations from the learning library, specifically the one on how to create random data. For the demos and applets, you might be interested in this distribution calculator. So let's look at that one. Um, so back in jump. The distribution calculator is down here, and that allows you to see what different distributions look like and calculate things that would have been in one of those old tables in the back of a, an intro stats textbook. So you can um, look between different values or uh, on the outside edges of values. So let's maybe make this. So I'm looking at this tail and this tail. Um, and cutting out the middle. So a bunch of these types of applets are built in. Um, just really quickly, let me show you a few that I always use. I love demonstrate regression and demonstrate ANOVA. I really like these sampling distribution confidence interval hypothesis test ones. Um, there's a permutation test for two means and two medians. If you've just got summary statistics and not a data table, you can also calculate, for example, a one sample Z or one sample T test, a two sample T test or a paired test um, just from the summary statistics. Let's look at maybe um, sampling distribution of sample means. So this one, we got a little tiny preview in that screenshot of the video before. This is the population data on the top. One sample at a time will show here and then the accumulating distribution of sample means would show here. So if we assume the data are normally distributed, let's put a curve and a histogram. So we see that what the data would look like in a histogram and also that no normal curve. Let's take samples of maybe size 10, small samples. Let's take 100 of them. Let's animate it, meaning show us each sample one after another. Uh, let's plot the normal curve and then let's draw those samples. So we can watch in the middle pane each sample get taken and it drops a new sample mean into the bottom. And we can watch the whole simulation go. We're on sample 80 something. There we go. So in the end we get this distribution of sample means much skinnier than the original population distribution because this standard deviation divided by the square root of n <laughs> should give us this standard deviation. So that's a really cool uh, sample Sampling distribution of sample means um, demonstrate regression. Let's you um, put points. I actually love this for the fact that I can create fake data sets really easily. So if I want to um, create my own, oops. Yeah, um, If I wanted like to add curvature to this, I could add points up here and points up here. Maybe I need to shrink this a little bit. Maybe I need to spread this out a little bit. So I can create this uh, data set so, so that then it looks like something that a quadratic would fit well. So if I need an example where a quadratic will fit it, then I can use this red triangle and I can say save sample to data table. So I can just click points on to make the data set I want, then save sample to data table saved me the uh, 
coordinates of those points. I love this for inventing fake data sets. It's really helpful. So that's the demonstrate simple linear regression. But if I'm just using it for its purpose, then I can also ask um, uh, to do things to this, like let me try to fit a least squares line. Let me do it by myself. So I'm gonna fit my own line, not the actual least squares, I'm gonna fit my line. So I'm gonna drag this, oops, I just added points instead. That was not super. Drag this, so I'm trying to fit the line. That's where I think the best fit is gonna be. So let's see how well I did. Um, let me fit my residuals. So it draws the, the line of how different the line is from the point. Let's show my squares. So then it squares each of the residuals and shows me the sum of squares. So I have a huge number for my sum of squares error. Now let's compare that to if it fit the least squares line. So I was pretty off. And the sum of squares for the residuals, um, for those errors, if for the correct, for the least squares is much better than mine. So I had way more error than I needed to have. So this is another really nice tool. So there's a bunch of these built in. So again, um, there's recommendations in this document for which ones are gonna help for particular topic areas. Um, there's also some simulations. So if you're trying to teach about probability and you need to simulate data from different probability distributions, there's some nice simulators. So if I go back to, I know it's right behind here, here we go. So to the simulations, and let's say we choose dice rolls. We can add rows to this. So if we go to rows and add rows, let's add 20 rows, okay. So it says the first time I roll it, I get a four. So, so far the average is a four. The next time I get a three. Now the average of four and three is three and a half. Now I get a six. What's the average now? Now I get a six. What's the average now? Now I get a one. What's the average now? So this is a, a an average of everything above. And then I can, um, look at sort of how the average comes toward the middle over time. So this one's kind of fun for that. So there's a bunch of these simulations as well if you wanted to simulate. Um, here's random distribution. If you wanted to simulate from a uniform, a normal, an exponential, and a double exponential, again, I can add rows, rows, add rows. Let's add 20 rows, sure. And then if I plot these guys, let's just look at their histograms. I can see uh, with just 20 samples, there's not a wild difference between these. Let me actually stack them. But the uniform is starting to become a little bit flat. The normal has a bit of a hump in the middle. Exponential is a little different shape, double, double exponential. So the more rows I add, the more clearly I'll see those patterns. So really cool stuff hiding here in the teaching scripts. Um, what else is here? So for probability concepts, again, we've got some recommendations from those um, applets. We've got some case study recommendations. We've got some lab activity recommendations. Then for discrete probability distributions, more recommendations. Continuous probability distributions, more recommendations. For sampling distributions, some really good teaching scripts for this because this is a difficult statistical concept. So we've got all those built-in applets. Um, there's even a case study to help with sampling distributions, this defect sampling. Another lab activity. For proportions, Lots of things dealing with proportions, some case studies on inference for proportions, some lab activities. Uh, for means, lots of demos for uh, understanding things about confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for means, for power, for um, what significance level means, some recommended data sets, some case studies, some lab activities. Same thing for chi-squared, same thing for ANOVA. Um, really nice case studies for ANOVA. Same thing for regression. There's some data set recommendations here that I really like. The ANSCOM data is really good. If you're teaching regression for the first time, that's a great data set to use. So I would definitely recommend that. And then some non-parametric alternatives. For JUMP, the non-parametrics are just built in as you learn ANOVA, as you learn regression, as you learn a t-test, they're right there presented for you. Um, but if you wanted to pull that out as a separate unit, here's a couple things that might help with that topic area. Okay, so that's what I really wanted to show you today was just, we've got a lot of resources. We want you to be able to use them and find them. And so hopefully you're gonna find our website to be really useful for that. So if you, um, again, if we just started at jump.com slash academic, I did mean that. You'd land here if you click on faculty, 
and then click on teaching resources that takes you to this course material library with all these resources um, and we really focused in on intro stats today so if there's anything on these pages that you've got questions about or you need help with or you're looking for a resource that you can't find there's there's something missing that we really should be creating let us know uh, by email and I'm gonna just use we've got still almost 20 more minutes of this hour and so we've got plenty of times for time for questions so I'm gonna um, open it back up Kevin if you'll um, check the chat for any questions. If anyone um, has any questions, let me know. So I'll give you a minute to, to type in questions. And while I give you that minute, I see that I forgot to mention community.jump.com. So this is one last place to go for lots of user contributed things and to contribute your own things. So there's something called a file exchange where people are giving us more add-ins or sample data. Um, you can ask for help. So there's lots of help topics. If you don't want to pick, if you don't want to commit to one of these things, you can just type here. So we could say maybe teaching. Maybe we want to find things where people posted about teaching. So it recommends some things. So here's some exercises for teaching statistics workshop materials. Here's teaching with jump for large groups of students, um, interactive teaching modules. So lots of resources are going to pop up. If you wanted to uh, look at like a t-test, if you just wanted to, to look for a particular topic, here's somebody's question about the t-test. Here's another question about a t-test. Here's another question about Welch's t-test with multiple comparisons correction. So you'll find a lot of um, places to ask your own questions, places to search other people's questions and answers, and to find these contributed things like add-ins or data sets or examples or teaching materials. So Kevin, do we have any questions? Uh, we do. One question here is, so this person teaches some courses for engineering. They want to know if these applets, can you bring in your own data um, versus just using what's um, available? Yeah, super question. So the, to get to the applets again, it was the help and then the sample data at the bottom, and then they're down here in this teaching resources. So many of these things, like the calculators, for example, if you're trying to calculate um, a confidence interval for one mean, you can either in, bring in your own data from raw data, or you can give it the summary statistics. So if you've got a homework assignment and some the problem says the mean was this, the standard deviation was this, you could type in summary statistics. But if you've got your own data, then you click raw data and you point to the data set with your data in it. So I, it's just taking me to my, let's, say that this is my data set. So here's my data with species, um, subjects within species, how far their, um, this is something about their range, so how far these foxes wandered and in which season. So maybe I want to look at that range and find a confidence interval. Um, so I could do a Z or a T if I don't know the sigma. Um, and then it, it will calculate this for me. So yes, many of them you can bring in your own data. You may have noticed in, I think it was demonstrate regression, where I was creating my own data set here, there was also my sample. So I just, oh, let me click off that again. So you could get a data set that's normally distributed around a line of these characteristics. So a slope of five, uh, or a slope of three, an intercept of five. If I make the intercept negative five, you can see it moves the data down, up. If I change the slope, it changes how um, how angly it is. So it's a negative slope here, it's a positive slope here. Oops, oops. There we go. So you, if you have normal data, you can use these characteristics or you can use your own sample from another data table. So if I use animals, I could use um, miles as the response. I don't have another continuous predictor, so I'm kind of stuck on this one. So that's that's a bad example. Or you can create your own by saying, hmm, I have a response that goes from negative 20 to uh, positive 20. And I have a predictor that goes from 100 to 1,000. So then it lets me have this blank canvas to build my own, and I can drag a point around and, and make my own sample. So it, it depends on the applet, but most of the applets, if they generate data, do allow you to bring your own data in. I hope that helped with your question. If you have a follow-up question, ask it in the chat, uh, and I'll try to get to it. Uh, note that in, that instructor said, cool, thanks, Ruth, exclamation point, smiley face. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, 
here's another one which is saying i can't seem to find this interactive tool that shows p value and pow oh i i know what they're asking um, not inside of the interactive teaching modules, Ruth, but you know when you're in the distribution platform yes. and you do a test, yep. you can, that, I think that's what they're asking. Yeah, so that is in two places. It's under this um, teaching scripts and then under teaching demonstrations, there's demo mean test power and demo mean test p-value. So this thing, I think, is what you're asking about. It does show up within Jump, just regular in the software. But if you wanted it specifically from the applets, this is where it lives. You can, uh, I'm really bad at dragging these. You can grab that square and drag the this around. So it, um, the estimated mean is this value here. You can change what the true distribution is, what the truth is behind the scenes, and then it updates the p-value. You could look at the, the low side instead or the high side instead. So that same thing is built into Jump. If I, do I still have an open data set? Let's open big class, perfect. Um, so if I go to distribution and let's just look at a distribution of the height. And I would rather look at this in the horizontal layout. So here's the distribution of the height. Here's the calculated mean from the data from this little red triangle. Nope, that's not what I want. From this little red triangle at height, I can ask it to test to that mean. So if I do that test, um, okay, so the sample mean is 62.55. Let's say our hypothesized mean is 65 inches. We think that all these students on average are 65 inches. That's absolutely not true, but let's try it. We can do the non-parametric test if we want. We can do the um, uh, Z test if we know the true standard deviation, but we never do, so I'll say okay. We get a little picture here. The distribution centered around the null value of 65 that I hypothesized. The little red line indicating the actual estimate at 62.55. And then here's the versions of the p-value. So the test statistic, if we take the mean minus the hypothesized mean divided by the standard error of the mean, we get this minus 3.6, that t-statistic. T if we wanted the two-sided p-value, so that more this extreme or more on both sides of the distribution, that's 0 0.0008. If we want it just on this low side, it's 0 0.0004. If we want everything above that red line, then it's almost all of the distribution, so it's 0.9996. And from this little red thing, there's a p-value animation and a power animation. So these, this is going to look really similar, just like that thing in the applets. So it's uh, got it centered at 65 where I hypothesized that the, so this is the null distribution based on my hypothesis this is the actual estimate and um, I can change things like the sample size what would have happened if I had a smaller sample size I could change things like which p-value I'm looking at the top or the bottom or both sides and so on so I think that's what you're looking for so it's available in distribution when you've actually done a test of the mean and it's also available here under the teaching demonstrations um, under demo mean test p-value or the one for the power is there too okay thank you ruth um another question uh or maybe this sounds more like a request saying i don't know if this is too much to ask um but do you guys provide um Oh, okay. Well, the answer is yes. Do you, do you guys provide a, or can you guys provide a demonstration at the start of my class, um, the beginning of this of the semester to, to show the students jump? Yeah, we probably can. If we got to a, a point where um, one professor at every single university in the United States and Canada asked us to do this, so Kevin and I cover the U.S. and Canada. Um, jump is used all over the world, but if I'm just thinking about my workload, <laughs> If, if every single professor who is teaching with Jump asked us to do this, we'd probably run into a problem. But while you're one of the few who's asking us, absolutely, we would love to do that for your class. Um, in the future, if you want to kind of show the same thing year after year, um, we can record something that you can use or you can look at our webinar library where there's a lot of these sort of get started kinds of things. So jump.com slash webinar, that was one of those short links. If you just want the basics, if you want your students to learn the basics of navigation, you can show them these two videos, basic navigation part one and part two, or basic statistics and analysis like distributions and fit y by x, that's 22 minutes, or you can have them watch an entire hour long 
how do you get started doing distributions and graph builder and fit y by x for regression or ANOVA. Um, or you could watch any of these big topics. So yes, we would be happy to connect with you and, and provide that live. Um, if at any point it got, um, our, our workload got a little too much, there's a lot of these video things that are there as well. But anyone as well, please send us emails. Let us know what we can do to help you because if, if there's something um, that exists already that we could send you a link to, great. If um, it's helpful to you for us to get on a, a call um, and do something like this, a, a webinar with your students, we're happy to do that whenever that fits into our schedules. And right now we're home, so it fits into our schedules. So <laughs> please ask. Okay, great. Um, that is all the questions. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, Kevin and I really want to help you use Jump as well as possible. We want you to teach well with it. We want you to use our resources. We, we put a lot of um, time and sweat into these things and we definitely want uh, them to get used. So if you've got questions, let us know so we can help you get to the right resources.